three, two, one. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to Conversing with Chris and Misa, the podcast. Today, we are back with episode number 37. It is a Sunday afternoon in El Paso, Texas, July 19th, approximately 3.20 in the afternoon. As always, guys, I'm joined by co-host of the podcast, Misa, say what's up. Yo, 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 what it do, what it do, what it do. Also, guys, producer of the podcast, Miss Milena is also here today. Say what's up, Milena. Hi, hello. And today, guys, we are joined by friend of the pod. <laughs> uh, actually, the guy who won our um, Hydro Flask giveaway. Um, our first giveaway, right? <clears throat> our very first giveaway, yeah. Uh, his name is Kevin Austin. He's from Boston. Go ahead and, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and tell us or introduce go, yourself go, go, to the go. podcast. What's happening, everybody? Kevin! It's just reminded me of that movie, dude. It's just a tattoo of your name out. <laughs> Which movie? Fucking Home, Home Alone. Alone, dude. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, dude. yeah. Sorry, guys. My movie my, my movie knowledge is lacking. But the uh, best part about Kevin is he's the only guy I know with three first names. Yeah. So we got we to gotta rag on him for that. So his name, his full name is Kevin Daniel Austin. Jesus Christ, white people. Can you give him more <laughs> what first names than that? Jesus. Jesus. Don't forget it. Don't forget His it. His initials should spell out a whole name, huh? <laughs> Kidda. That's that's what his uh, initials <laughs> would spell out. Uh, my, dude. My, kill the, my kill the death average? <laughs> yeah, there you go. He's, <laughs> got, he's got an acronym I and everything. My KPA? He's really good at video games. All right. So, guys, um, shout out to you, Kevin, for joining us on this podcast today. Thank you for spending time with us, guys. Make sure to go follow us on face, Facebook, like us on Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, leave a five-star rating and leave us a nice review. We would, <laughs> or a four. <laughs> or a four or three or two. Or Nothing one, lower, please. Whatever. Um, leave us a review and a rating on, on Apple Podcasts if, if that's where you're listening to us. Um, Kevin, um, give us a few thoughts that you've had from listening to a few of our podcasts, if you will. Uh, it's it's good, man. I think you guys are are progressing. You know, I think it's it's definitely come a long way from when you guys first started, and you know, you guys are slowly adding stuff, and you guys are you know smoother with with what's going on. So you know, I think you guys are doing pretty good. Um, the one thing I w- I did notice from the last one, I guess, since you guys are starting to do the YouTube and recording it visually, um, just for people that maybe you know aren't friends or are other viewers that are coming in, I guess you guys took like maybe like two minutes in the beginning to start it up and you guys were kind of like talking about what was going to happen and how to get it going. So if someone hops in and like all they see is really nothing going on, you know, just to have some, maybe a little more something like that set up a little quicker to when you start recording that you've got it already set up. Cause you know, like I said, for some random person that's just hopping in and they're like, well, what the fuck is going on here? Well, if Chris was to hurry up and get that shit started all the time, then we wouldn't have that issue. But you're right, Kevin. Thank you, man. I'm going to note that shit down. Hey, take notes, Misa. Yeah, dude, actually. Don't, so- don't interview <laughs> Kevin again. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> um, kind of like when we did this, this one, when we started doing the visual taping, we did it like a lot sooner, t- closer yeah. to like when we started recording. But me and Misa were kind of trying to figure out if we kind of wanted to give people like a post-show break and like pre-show kind of like vibes just so you can kind of see like, you know, how it all comes together and like, yeah, you know, yeah. it doesn't just end when the podcast ends and it yeah. just doesn't start when the podcast starts. But a uh, good critique because visually, yeah, I can see how it could be like yeah, kind of Maybe boring, we could you know? change something around to where, you know, we, we could start it off and then right off the bat not having to wait for Chris. But, um, <laughs> But yeah, but yeah, dude. Great, good cri- shit. A great critique. We really yeah, do dude. enjoy that. That's been it's probably like one a, of the best ones. Yeah, somebody's definitely. actually been awesome about. I think that's like the only one that like has honestly yeah. been. Yeah, like- everybody's like, bro, you guys are sick <laughs> as fuck. Yeah. I wouldn't change a thing, a thing, man. You guys are, dude. Damn, my favorite, dude. Joe Rogan's podcast, nah, nah, Trash. nothing compared to y'all's. <laughs> you know, and I'm over here like, yo. Like, I don't yeah, know, you know, I know for everybody that, you, that everyone knows or your friends, you know, obviously they're going to tune in and wait. But, you know, if you're trying to, you know, get it out to more people, if you have other people that are just hopping in and they're like, well, what the fuck's going on? You know, you'll yeah. lose some of your interest in that. Yeah, definitely, dude. Thank you for sure. We Is really that when you stop watching that. or what? <laughs> 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 okay, so guys, you know what we have to do to properly start this podcast off? It's a tradition unlike any other. 
everybody who's been listening, you already know what's about to happen. For those of you who's it's your first time, go ahead and catch up, okay? We're going to crack this celebratory mm. beer. Jesus, Kevin already. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> oh. <laughs> did, did you hear that snap? From, dude, wow. <laughs> Jesus, Kevin. He's played football, clearly. <laughs> Oh, nice. What what do you got to drink there, Kevin? Tell us, what are you drinking on today? It's a Light Circus Hazy IPA. Jesus Christ. What the hell is a hazy Damn. IPA? <laughs> it means it's hazy, Lena. It means it's not so clear. <laughs> Whatever. How is it's it? It's dirty. On a, scale, <laughs> on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate that beer that you got? Uh, I'd actually probably put it at maybe like a 7. At a 7. It yeah. depends on the, if you're an IPA drinker or not, but it's kind of a mild IPA. I'm, I don't really like bitter ass beers, so for this one, it's kind of like citrusy, but still kind of on that hoppy side. Hey, there you go. What's your ten IPA beer? Shit. The goat. The goat of IPAs. Well, shit. For me, I probably suck because, like I said, the real fucking good IPAs that people like are the real bitter ass ones, and I'm like, nah, I can't do that <laughs> shit. But Another one that I would put at the top would probably be called the Desert Fog. See, that sounds wow. good. Yeah, I've heard that one before. <laughs> that one, yeah, that one uh, seems like it would be fucking good. So, anyways, yeah. guys, let's get into this podcast. Uh, we're going to do our Kicking Things Off segment. On this segment, we uh, go around the virtual Zoom meeting, and we, we uh, tell everybody what's new with each other on the podcast. So, I'll start us off today, guys. I had to work early this morning, and on my way home from work at... The corner of Mesa and Crossroads, or Mesa and Donovan, Crossroads, right? There's, like, a guy standing, like, you know, where the homeless people stand and where they beg for money. This guy had, like, a big-ass stick, and you know how, like, uh, I forget which uh, Ninja Turtle has the big-ass stick. Is it Donatello, or which one is it? Do you guys know? Uh, no, dude. No. I, I was into the Power Rangers, bro. <laughs> okay, the blue one. Okay, he swings the stick like he's like in martial arts or some shit. Yeah. And he's just like swinging it at cars, walking up and down. And then he's still asking people for money. I'm like, dude, you're fucking freaking people out. They're not going to give you any money doing that. Like, come on. Well, he's trying to be creative. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess. Because he, <laughs> he was really into it. Like, he knew what he was doing. He was swinging that stick all crazy. But, yeah, that's new. That's what's new with me, guys. Uh, Lena, what's new with you? No school on this one. School is for fools. Uh... Nothing. Damn, stumped her, dude. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I had hibachi, and that was really cool. We celebrated Danny's birthday, so a few of us got together just for dinner. Did it outside, so that was really fucking cool with all the wind and, you know, temporary sprinkles. But you know what? safest and best and the hibachi was fucking fire literally he like lit the grill on fire and everything we were pretty scared but it was fucking good so shout out birthdays of july shout out kevin what's uh, new with you <laughs> shit man just uh working and uh going to class pretty much for the normal work week schedule uh a little crazy uh, you know driving back and forth from the workplace and the hospital and everything we actually had seen uh i don't know i guess it would probably be a a homeless guy or something but i mean this guy had some serious issues i mean his <laughs> face was painted like the joker oh nice and Jesus. he's out in the street just you know waving and talking to himself and just having a blast out there in this wonderful disgusting heat that we have and other than that you know it's kind of the same hey i feel you on this that. heat will make a lot of people loony yeah and obviously that guy fucking i bet all his makeup was falling off and shit me so what's yeah. new with you um uh, really nothing dude i started watching this show called the order on netflix i mean, I don't know if you guys have heard of it no. well, my wife got me into it it has to do with like magic and like werewolves and shit like that and i've never been into it but it's good <laughs> kevin have you seen that show i have not okay lennon need- no, oh, okay I'm cutting off hey the if you like uh shows with werewolves uh misa can i go ahead and recommend one to you or a movie yeah um, yeah, yeah, go for it. Have you ever heard of uh, Twilight? I... Yeah, yeah, man. I, I own all the movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that's literally the only movie I could think of that has a fucking werewolf in it. That's the only reason I brought it up. So wow. let's uh, get into a little bit of how we know our boy Kevin here. Uh, me and Kevin have been friends for a very long time. Um, uh, Misa, we'd appreciate it if you didn't watch memes on your phone while we're doing the <laughs> podcast, you bastard. <laughs> uh, 
Well, I mean, if you were to talk about something more interesting. <laughs> well, we're about to get to it. You, <laughs> man, I, you stupid ass. Hey, Chris, I'll kick you off the podcast right now. All right, we're going to end it right now. Fuck it. Final thoughts, no, put, everyone. Just put you on timeout for five minutes. <laughs> get out of here. All right. So anyways, Kevin, uh, we met back in high school. What was like the first impression you had of me? He's a chump. <laughs> Let Kevin tell the perspective of meeting you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's that's what I said. Let I want him to tell it. Nah. Yeah, no, we we were you know high school days, you know, kind of same shit, you know, hanging out in class, you know, being stupid or doing something silly. But you know, I think uh, the first thing that stood out for me for was Chris was when we started actually playing some sports or doing shit, and uh, I, I I took Chris for granted, and uh, I didn't think he could uh, he could play the basketball. <laughs> yeah, there you go, bro. I didn't think Chris, he had to hit him. Chris doesn't. He just wears that shirt so people could think he does. Final four, baby. And, uh, I've almost yeah. been there. We we went out to the courts one time and uh, Chris showed up and I was like, holy shit! There you go. This guy, this guy can play. There you go, man. Oh my hey, Chris, God. when was the last time you played ball? <sighs> the oh, last God. time I played what ball, fuck, probably like three years ago, I would say. No, definitely. Longer. Maybe even longer. I don't know. I feel like the last time I played with was with our boy Ryan. Ryan's one of our good friends. That was back when we had a gym um, membership. But so. shit, I don't even remember. That's a good question. When's the last time you played, Misa? <laughs> Like right before Rona. Okay. Oh, okay. So recently. Kevin, you yeah. haven't played in a minute, huh? It's been a little bit. I mean, shit, we'll go here and there over to, you know, one of the local parks and shit, but Kev- nothing too well. <clears throat> Kevin suffered a gruesome injury that ruined his athletic potential that we're going to talk <laughs> about a little bit later. Ooh. Um, Kevin wanted to be a wide receiver for the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings are his favorite team. Just kidding. I didn't know if he wanted to be a receiver, but. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh so anyway fucking yeah me and kevin me, gold nation hey yeah, get the fuck out of here with that fucking vikings hey uh kevin uh misa wants to know if you've heard of his team misa go ahead and ask him um if he knows who your football team is well my football team's kind of like rona it's just moving around everywhere they're everywhere but um the chargers man have you heard fucking of them? Phillip. fucking philip he said i'm out of here man yeah, dude. He had his ninth kid, and he's like, too many kids before he got to get me another job. <laughs> yeah, he said, I'm out. Uh, mm-hmm. Fucking, um, what about, real fast, Kevin, before we move on, um, <laughs> what did you think of Miss Milena over here when you met her? You got, Uh-oh. you guys have a funny relationship. Oh, it's it's I hilarious. Wouldn't, I wouldn't say, fu- that funny is not the word that comes to mind. <laughs> she says she's not sure, huh? Oh, shit. No, I'm just kidding. I love you. What it's is- always been cool. I mean, yeah, at first, you know, when you always are meeting someone else for the first time, you know, you're kind of like, all right, what's this What's this chick about? And, you know, is, is she here for real or what the hell's going on? I remember that one time you got in a, you guys got mad at each other at Wig Daddy's oh. and Lena walked out. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to flip this table. We're gonna you ate this- my ranch! <laughs> Dude, that's exactly what happened. He just he yeah? didn't respect my boundaries. He didn't listen to me when I said, like, I really value this ranch. Like, he completely disregarded my feelings. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I just, I couldn't be around that type of person. I had to get out. It was ridiculous, well, Misa. You should have ordered, ordered extra ranch. <laughs> you still didn't answer the question. I well, think he, Lena was, he, uh, she was holding in something from the day before. She was, she was extremely worked up. <laughs> she was feisty that day. So, <laughs> okay. So, uh, Kevin, we haven't talked about COVID-19 on the podcast in a minute. So we're going to go ahead and give an update on that. So guys, um, currently in El Paso, there are 11,132 confirmed cases of COVID-19 with 179 deaths, um, 330,000 cases in Texas and 3.78 million throughout the United States. 14.4 million worldwide. So, Kevin, thoughts on the hottest topic of 2020, COVID-19? Yeah, you know, the, the, the topic that never seems to go away. It's not going to yeah, go I mean, away for a while. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of it's kind of here to stay. So, you know, it'll it'll be interesting to see how, you know, this stuff plays out in the further, you know, coming months. And, you know, this could even prolong even into years. So, but I mean, yeah, I mean, for me, it hasn't been anything too crazy as far as my schedule goes and everything. I mean, we're still working. Uh, we're still doing all our stuff at the hospital. Uh, the school changed a little bit, I guess, you know, instead of going to class, now everything's online. How do you um, like online? I, if, for me, I guess with my schedule, it works out easier because, you know, I'm, who wants to go to work for an eight, 
a 10 hour shift and then get out and go straight to class and you know get out at nine or 10 o'clock at night and just go home and sleep and start it all over again. Right. So <laughs> it makes it nice <laughs> to not have to go. So, you know, it's kind of easier a little bit online. Hey, Misa, but, tell, you know, uh, tell Kevin what you think about school, your, your advice. Yeah, dude. Um, a lot of people like when I tell them this, it, it, it's changed several people's life for the best, I think, hopefully. And that's, um, Schools for fools. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Just look at Lena, that fool. Hey, hey Misa, um, what are your thoughts on the latest COVID news since we haven't talked about it in a while on here? The the fact that there's people out there that think it's like a hose, you know, or, or just that get works. mad at the fact that, you know, that, that they need to wear a mask and shit like that. Like that right there is just like, yo, dude, like. Just fucking do it for your for for your family. You know what I mean? That's something that for me pisses me off. The whole closing the bars and shit. That's fine. You know, like we could still buy beer, alcohol. That's no biggie. <laughs> you know, it's just the fact that people are getting upset about little shit like that. You know, saying they can't breathe. You know, it's like, dude, get with it. We'll stay home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We we live but, in a crazy time, man. Kevin, are you a are you a mask wearer? I don't I, think so. Look at him. He's on now. No, 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 no. No, actually, for the hospital, I mean, it's it's completely mandatory. So every day we walk in, we have to sign in and log in, and they give us one in the whole nine yards. So, fucking, what I was gonna say real fast before we move on, it's crazy how we kind of like just politicize the fucking whole mass thing instead of just making it like, okay, maybe we should just do this to protect everyone. We're like fighting about it like fucking children now. So. Shout yeah. out to us, guys, by the way. <laughs> hey. All right. So, guys. Like a big ass fucking Jerry Springer show. Yeah, dude. That's what our countries became. And like, it feels like kindergarten. Like, whenever you're supposed to get in line to go somewhere, lunch, recess, whatever, and some fucking kid just keeps getting out of line. And then the teacher's like, get back in line. We're not going anywhere till everyone's in line. And people just keep fucking around. Like, it's just a waiting game at this point. Yeah, that, that kid that kept getting out of line back in the day was Misa, right? I made my own line. <laughs> All right, so let's keep this podcast moving. So, uh, Misa, do you know who Blink-182 is? <laughs> of course, Don. Okay, well, we'll really see about that later on. That's a hint for you, by the way. So I hope you guys right. are paying attention, okay? Um, so, me and Kevin... What was this right after? Was this senior year? Was this right after high school? It slips yeah, my mind. It was in between there. Either we just finished high school or it was close to the end of it. Okay. So me and Kevin, we had bought in tickets to go see Blink-182 in Albuquerque with our friend Joseph Rivas. Shout out to Joseph. And so what happened was the day of the concert, we're about to leave. Kevin picks me up from my house. And then we go to Joseph's crib and... All of a sudden, he can't go. You know what I mean? Like, he was like, nope, can't go. My dad's going to take my brand new Mustang away from me. You guys are on your own. See you later. But we had the extra ticket, so we grab our boy Isaac. Uh, well, my boy shout Isaac. Out Isaac. Yeah, He's shout out. Shout out to him. He's been on the podcast before. And we headed over to Albuquerque to see uh, Blink-182. Um, give us some thoughts on that on that uh, time that we went over there, Kevin. Yeah, it was cool. Man. It, was, it was definitely a different time, you know. I mean, shit, we were, you know, underage. We kind of, kind of, you know, experiencing the world still. And you know, we drove up there and shit just to check it out. And you know, like I said, we couldn't drink or do anything like that. And my mom actually lives up in Albuquerque, so we actually stopped with her. And you know, we were planning on staying the night, but you know, plans always change when you're with Chris. <laughs> always. Yeah, dude. Shit. Yeah, shit's always fluid. Shit's I always know. fluid with, with me, bro. Like for real. And. I just remember when we got to your mom's crib, you had that big ass snake. Yeah. I, I was fucking scared to shit oh my of God. that thing. I completely forgot about your snake because honestly, when we were going to live together, I was like, I, I'm like selfishly praying he doesn't have that goddamn reptile. I can't. <laughs> I'm going to shit myself all the time. I just, I'm sorry. You still have it? No, he actually died a while back, but yeah, I had him for quite a while. How long? Shit, probably like 10 years, I think. Hey, Misa, would you ever um, get yourself a snake as a pet and keep it in your bedroom? Yeah, dude, why not? Uh, for me, the, the shit that kind of creeps me out are like rodents, dude. <laughs> like a guinea pig? Would you ever have a guinea pig? Fuck no. 
Tony. What about him. yeah? Shout out our boy Tony. What about a a fucking uh, a ferret? Maybe. What, dude? I would be more scared of a ferret. Those seeds are crazy. Cause so Chris's uncle and aunt had one, and like they would tell me stories. Dude, they would climb on your head. You'd be chilling on your couch, and then the next thing you know, you'd feel a fucking like ferret on your fucking head. Hell, that. Yeah. Well, that's fun with the snakes and shit. My brother actually, you know, back in our younger days, and I don't know where the hell he got this idea and how he purchased it and made it happen. But my brother actually bought like a fourteen foot albino python. What? Not down at all. No, not down. <laughs> Misa, are you so, down with snakes? I'm down for snakes, though. Okay, go ahead. I'm Kevin. down with you. Yeah, so he, he, literally, <laughs> he literally had to build like this huge box to, you know, keep this fucking snake in there. I mean, this thing, like I said, was 14, 15 feet long. I mean, it's something that you would see on, you know, television or on a Hollywood movie or oh something. Oh, my God, dude. That shit. What are you doing, my brother? I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? I mean, the fucking scariest thing at this point seeing this snake, like what do you feed it like like people and shit like yeah can you give them uh, a dude with ketchup and mayo please yeah so you actually buy fucking rabbits and feed it fucking rabbits oh no damn Mm-mm. all right so what did he do with the snake like he brought it over to the crib he, and then he bought it yeah just to, i guess to have it and he had bought it on online i can't where exactly where it was and he was planning on doing whatever he was going to do but i guess the thing that he didn't know and i guess that's why the guy was getting rid of it was the snake i guess had like a broken back what true okay so, that's crazy yeah, so, so we were taking care of this fucking 15 foot fucking python for however long it was and you could tell finally after like six months that it it's like back end was like starting to like deteriorate and like fall apart and then that's oh. when my brother was realizing like oh shit i think this guy must have that's why he sold it to me was because the snake was, you know, not in good health. So, Aww. but the whole time of dealing with that snake and fucking trying to feed it and put it away and do all that shit, I was like, you know, I'm not down to do that. This is fucking snake, dude. I was like a little kid at that time. Dude. I'm like, <laughs> like <laughs> literally. Yeah. And what did your mom say about this? She was like, dude. I mean, she was. I think at first told her a story that like, yeah, it wasn't that big, and then once it fucking arrived, it was like, you know, what the fuck are you doing, like? <laughs> This it grew a, overnight. This is an anaconda, bro. Like, Jesus. <laughs> oh, anaconda. shit. 14 feet, bro? Damn. Yeah, dude, that's ridiculous. But yeah, dude, that's fucking funny. Yeah, I always remember that about our Blink-182 trip, that fucking snake. And also, the, the the concert was badass, but yeah, fuck snakes, dude. I'm not down. My little cousin has a snake, and I'm just like, you're fucking stupid. And like, I mean, I, <laughs> I understand. Like, she spends time with him. She feeds him, all that shit. But I'm like, I just... I can't. I just no, nope. Yeah. So, um, me and Kevin used to be roommates back in the day. Well, actually, me, Lena, Kevin, and our boy Ryan. Shout out, Ryan. Uh, we used to have a crib together. And Spider Man. And we used to fucking um, live there together. It was pretty chill. And one time, I remember, and I wasn't there for this, <laughs> but um, I was. I think me and Lena were out of town, and then we got back and. Ryan's telling us the story of um, how Kevin choked him out. And then, um, so go ahead and tell us a little bit about that, Ryan. Or right, Kevin, sorry. Explain the it's, it's what that snake taught him, dude. Yeah, why did you choke out Ryan? <laughs> well, uh, to, to, to start off the day, you know, I mean, obviously a, a long day of uh, festivities of drinking and smoking and, you know, all the fun that could be had. All of the above. <laughs> You know, you know, beer, beer pong and flip cup and you know, card games and that yeah, you know, life. What, 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 what could possibly go wrong? So <laughs> me, me being the fucking playful self that I am, I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to jump on Ryan's back and I'm going to wrap my arm around him. And so Ryan panics <laughs> and like kind of fucking tightens up. So I fucking hold on tighter so I don't fall off. And within literally 10 seconds, Ryan passes out and I can feel like his whole body just go limp. And so like, I kind of like set him on the ground and I was like, well, what the fuck? That was weird. But I was like, all right, he's just, you know, we were just fooling around and shit. So I turn around and all of a sudden I just feel like I just got railed in the back by something. I'm like, what the fuck happened? So I turn around and then I get fucking railed in the face. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Chill out, Ryan. Because he was fucking pissed because I guess he thought, like, I intentionally was trying to, like, you know, do something to him. Oh, shit. I remember that, dude. I remember Damn. when you guys told me that fucking story. 
And oh. I was asking everybody because I was like, dude, like literally I like was on him for like 10 seconds and he passed out. And they were like, yeah, dude, like obviously the smoking and the alcohol was out. It was a bad combo. <laughs> I call this the anaconda. And they just get yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin was like practicing his like pro wrestling move on him, Ryan. <laughs> I couldn't stop dude, laughing. Dude, and it's it's funny because, yeah, once Ryan's pissed off, dude, like, that, you got to, like, watch out, dude, because he'll go after you for real. <laughs> yeah, he's, like, the kindest person for sure, and he's, like, goofy, you know what I mean? But it, I was, like, hearing it the next day, he's, like, yeah, I was pissed. I didn't know what was going on. And I was, like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> dude, I, I was there. Well, when- imagine. Well, imagine. You're, you're drunk as fuck. <laughs> Probably high, too. <laughs> you're just chilling. Crossfit. And next thing you know, you feel like an arm come at you, and then next thing you know, you wake up on the floor. <laughs> I would have probably done the same, dude. I would have chucked him. No, too. no, Misa, you, <laughs> Misa, you would have gotten up and just it would have been automatic hands being thrown everywhere. Like, yeah, dude. Everything I was care if I hit. hit the wrong guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everything was gonna get fucking hit. So, um, yeah, that's one of the many stories that we had from fucking living at that crib. Tell us. How was it living with Chris, dude? There you go. Oh, it, was, it was, you know, nothing but trouble and games. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I like that game, trouble. Hey, Kevin knows he he Kevin knows that he had a lot of fun when we were living there. He knows it. It's it's, it's been a nonstop of uh, you know, living with roommates and uh doing things we shouldn't probably do, but hey, it's better to have done them then than now. <laughs> I think the that's, stories the stories live on. I think that's one of the things that's funny too is like whenever like when you when you're young and you're like, Yeah, I can't wait to like grow up and like do live on my own, do my own thing. And then when you live with friends, you just realize like how irresponsible you can be. And you and it but it's okay because like you're living together, you're chilling, like it's we had a whole bookshelf. Dude, we would we, we would create yeah. the Mexican NFL Sunday ticket in the living room. We'd bring like every TV that we had and like every computer and just like put like a game on on each one and just like that was like our Sundays. The my favorite thing honestly was like the most random shit that would happen. Like whenever one person didn't come watch the games, but if their team still lost, then they still got the L even if their door was closed. Yeah, so we used to give out an L to who everybody to it was me, uh, Ryan and Kevin. Ryan's a Broncos fan, Kevin's a Vikings fan, I'm a Cowboys fan. If our team's lost, we would get we had this big cutout L and we would just like hand it out to but each like, other liberally. It but it was funny. Up? I don't remember. I don't know. We just decided to do that and that's you know, that's just how it was. But speaking of football, Kevin, uh we went to a uh Dallas Cowboy game one time and I told this this story on the podcast before, but I didn't get into like a lot of deep detail into it. Um <laughs> but what what are your some some of your memories from that sto- from that uh that little vacation that we took? Uh, well, I would say, uh, going home after the bars in downtown Dallas, uh, humidity's at like 80%. It's still like a hundred degrees out. And, uh, I asked Derek, yo, man, uh, is it cool if I go swimming, you know, cause I'm sick of this fucking heat. So we jumped into the pool, Derek's condominium or duplex or apartment or whatever faces the direction of the pool. And we are literally having a party at the pool at like three in the morning. And they are chunking beers off the balcony to the pool so we can drink. <laughs> it was dangerous, dude. I thought someone was going to get cracked in the head with one of those beers because we, we were pretty high up there. And we were, yeah, we were liberally just fucking tossing beer cans into the pool at like three in the morning. Oh, Obviously, that got, to, that got put to that got put to an end pretty fast. You know, the, the 5 O showed up and they were like, uh, yeah. Yeah, they cut us. They cut yeah. us off pretty fast there. All right. So what? One other thing that happened when we were over there, and it was pretty funny. Um, after the game, we were all like, we were pretty cooked, and yeah. um, we went back to the hotel room, and fucking me and TJ decided we hadn't had enough, and we had we had driven there in oh, Kevin's no. car. So Kevin and Tony pass out in the hotel room. Me and TJ, we swipe the keys and we fucking go to, I, to, I forget where we went, to a bar. <laughs> we took Kevin's car and the next morning he was not happy. The next morning we, oh, we uh, left to drive home to El Paso and we drove like <laughs> probably three to four hours with the windows in the back seat all the way down. <laughs> and me and TJ just getting blown by like 100 miles an hour of like wind gusts. <laughs> 
<laughs> that shit was Torture, huh? Dude, y- yes, because it's like, it comes fast as shit. Like, you can't do anything. Oh my he locked God. the windows. He locked the windows so we couldn't roll them up. <laughs> Like, it was the funniest shit ever. Oh, we, we literally drove, like, a few hours like that. We are like, Kevin, please stop. I couldn't. When he, when he told me, I was like, yeah. That's, yeah, that's what you fucking get. I think we, what did we yeah. do? We pulled over to eat, and, like, we apologized again, and then you're like, okay, fine. Oh, I can only imagine what that apology was. That shit was hilarious. You see, when it comes to, like, a vehicle, dude, and you're you're, like, in there, and you're getting tortured like that, you can't you can't do shit about it. I've been in a situation like that with a friend, man. Um, his name is Junior. Shout out to Junior. We had pissed off his brother somehow. I, I forgot how or what we did. So he he had to go pick us up on the east side. And this is like in the middle of summer, dude. And he picks us up and he was pissed off. And he didn't have one of us sit in the passenger seat. He's like, no, you motherfucker sit in the back. So we're out in the back, dude, and this guy pulled the windows up and he turned on the heater, like <laughs> fucking oh, all the way up, dude. And we're in the east side and he left. Like, we we're trying to fight him, dude, but we we're close to crashing. <sighs> Bro, we we're like, no! <laughs> and like his brother was like, motherfucker. He's sweating his ass, too. And he's like, take it, take it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Never again. I don't like getting in cars with other people, dude. Dude, the the wind gust was so bad in the backseat. Me and TJ built like little forts with our blankets <laughs> so that so that we could like chill without being destroyed by the fucking by the wind. But yeah, that shit was hilarious. What are your thoughts crazy. on that, Kevin? When I woke up that morning, it's because fucking after you drink a lot, sometimes you either sleep or you don't. And that night I fucking didn't sleep for shit. And then after the whole fucking day of drinking, well, actually just overall from the whole trip, it was like the last day of it. We've been going hard. We've been sleeping on couches. We've been sleeping on, on the, the floor. floor. So yeah. the last day you're just like, dude, I'm fucking so tired of this shit. I just want to sleep. I just want to go home. I just, you know, and so I wake up in the morning at like six o'clock to go to my fucking car. And I'm like, well, shit, I'll start building some shit up and oh, you no. know, get ready. So I go to my fucking car and I can't, you know, the key not where I left them. I'm fucking looking for the keys. There's water burger fucking all over the fucking hotel. <laughs> fucking Chris, Chris is dead in the fucking bed next to us. I'm like, what the fuck happened last night? <laughs> With like ketchup smeared on his face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I go out to the car and fucking it just reeks of fucking weed. There's fucking like stems. There's fucking ashes everywhere. I was like, dude, these motherfuckers, like the AC, I turned on the AC. You could smell it through the AC. I was like, dude, these guys just fucking had a fucking blast last night. In my fucking car. That's right, I'm Kevin. Like, I'm like, dude, I'm already, I'm already tired. I'm tired. I'm, I'm, it's the end of the trip. Like we're leaving today. I'm not happy. <laughs> it was. I can only imagine. You know what's funny hey, about that? That was is, a great trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget how uh, ruthless you can be. But speaking of football, I feel like I never meet a Vikings fan. I feel like you're the only person I know. But I know you finally went to your dream dream game. Tell us about that. It was actually uh, probably like. I'd probably have to put it in like top five best moments of my life. No. Very I nice. mean, it was, yeah. When, you know, when you, when you see something like that as a kid and you grow up, you know, and you, it's just something that you can't, you know, it's like one of those bucket list things. You just can't wait to be able to go out there, you know, experience it all and, uh, you know, get to see that. And obviously uh, the Vikings actually built a new stadium uh, when we went. So it was the first year that it was actually open. Uh, when we went and checked it out. So, I mean, we got to see, you know, the stadium, brand new, everything. I mean, the way it is and everything that it's set up, it was just, you know, it was an, an incredible thing to take in. And then, obviously, my chick bought us, like, badass fucking almost, like, sideline seats Shut to up. where, you know, and, and the game couldn't have been any better, you know. So, it was just like the whole experience was, you know, as good as it could possibly be. Ah, that's hey, so cool. There you go. I love football. I do. I'm a fan. All right, guys. So we are at the approximately 30 second minute mark. Um, we we're gonna take a little a break in a bit, but before that, we debuted this segment the last episode with our boy Rico. Um, this is a it's called a thoughts from the shower with Misa. So we're gonna go ahead and start our thoughts from the shower with Misa segment. Oh yeah, this water feels good. Mm. Mm. Wait, wait a minute. If killing people is bad, why do we kill people? 
who kill people. Hmm. Wait, wait. If money is the root of all evil, why do churches ask for it? Hmm. Wait. If I get out of the shower clean, how does my towel get dirty? Hmm. <laughs> oh, fuck. And every time I'm like, yeah, why? <laughs> All right, so which one do we want to dissect first, guys? Do we want to dissect the churches, the towels? I'm thinking about the towels. Or killing, yeah, or killing people who kill people. So which one do you want to start with? Dude, I want to know about the whole towel thing. I asked my <laughs> wife, and she gave me this whole scientific explanation that, you know, which made no sense. Okay, Kevin, we need your answer to that. If you get out of the shower clean, why is your towel, to- how does your towel get dirty? Uh, well, uh, you're just not scrubbing good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, so i'll note that one down yeah it, maybe we need to improve our shower um processes a little bit scrub your balls better <laughs> okay Kev- yeah, fucking rufa and i'll get in there okay kevin <laughs> if money is the root of all evil why do churches ask for it because uh you know just like anybody they're fucking greedy hey jeez, <laughs> that's evil Hey, Kevin's got some hot takes right yeah, now. Yeah, Kevin's on fire. It's because I actually had just read somebody had posted something showing, like, you know, they were saying that, like, yeah, what if what if we actually taxed churches and it showed the amount of money that they get basically, you know, tax-free and it was, like, $1.7 billion of tax-free money because they're a church? It's- yeah, I've always said that, man. I've always said they should tax the churches. And it's... it's- I would have wanted... Well, and then it's crazy because then you have huge congregations like catholicism and then you see what other things they spend money on you know but they can't be taxed so it just it makes it a walking contradiction and you have to ask like well then what the fuck are you doing with that money you know what i mean so you guys have you know how we all got uh well did we all get stimulus checks on here yes sir misa did you get one <laughs> just don't tell my wife hey. <laughs> okay. so um there's an article online that says about three quarters of u.s catholic parishes applied for government paycheck protection so essentially these guys got uh some of that stimulus money the churches for no reason bro what's up with that churches and some other big companies banked out on that fucking stimulus bill they really um, did. so on the last one kevin why do we kill people who kill people why do we you show kill- people that killing is wrong Duh. Uh, but why though? <laughs> an eye for an eye. There you go. It makes an it... eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Oh. But it kind of it kind of makes you think like maybe it... like the way I see it is like death is like the ultimate punishment because you don't have a chance at redemption. You don't have a jan- a chance at rehabilitation. Like your second chance is elimin- is ultimately eliminated for you. So it's like to me an ultimate. So it's like if you are gonna do the ultimate of sins, I feel like maybe society possibly sees it as like that's it. Like because you're so fucked up or you fucked up so bad, like you don't get a second chance. I guess that's why we kill people who kill people, yeah. right? To teach them a lesson, Misa. There we go. There you go. Don't kill people, guys. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> scratch that uh, list I have up. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're going to take a break. This is Conversing with Chris and Misa, the podcast, episode number 37, featuring our boy Kevin Boston from Austin. Or what did I call you, Kevin Austin from Boston last time? <laughs> we'll switch it up. Uh, okay, Kevin so. Kevin Austin straight out of fucking Boston, there bro. There you go. Damn. Damn. Coming direct. I can't do that. So, fucking, yeah, guys, we're going to take this break. Uh, make sure to follow us on Facebook, like us on Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And rate and review on Apple Podcasts. We're going to take this break. And when we come back, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some stuff that's going on in China. Kevin had a devastating in- injury. And um, I, fell out of, I fell out of the Jeep, guys, at some point, too. You're going to want to uh, hear that story. We're also going to retry the uh, Name That Hit segment that we did with <laughs> Rigo that failed so terribly. So you guys are going to want to stick around for that. So let's take a break, and we will be right back. What is up, everyone? My name is Chris from Conversing with Chris and Misa, the podcast. Today, I am here to talk to you guys about the Anchor app. If you haven't heard about the Anchor app, the Anchor app is the easiest way for you to make a podcast. Just like I did, you can create your very own podcast. 
The best thing about the Anchor app is, number one, it's completely 100% free to use. Number two, it is really easy to use. So if you're not good with technology, like my producer Lena here, this app is perfect for you. Number three, the app is available for download from your app store. The Anchor app provides certain tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. This means that additional recording software is not needed. Get it out of here. Anchor will distribute your distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many other platforms. Best part is you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It t- it's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So guys, open your app store, download the free Anchor app today, or go to anchor.fm to get started. All right, guys, we're back from our break. This is episode 37 of Conversing with Chris and Misa, the podcast. Uh, we have our boy Kevin Daniel Austin here with us. Uh, shout out to Bob. you for being on the podcast today. Um, and we have a, we're going to actually do a special toast to Kevin today. So, Kevin, go ahead and tell the podcast what you've poured yourself up. We got some uh, nice ice cold or need Oh my god, I tasted oh. that. <laughs> yeah, I got some tequila that was laying around here at the crib too, so I got one. So, yeah. Misa, I'm taking one. this one for you. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. Oh, so Come on. Well, that's, that's how he knows good. Spanish. <laughs> he is. He really is at heart. Kevin is the Mexican white guy, the most whitest, well, Mexicanest white guy I've ever met. Yeah, I would concur. I would agree with those statements. <laughs> we had a few things we wanted to touch on on the second half of this podcast. Kevin, real fast, how are you feeling the vibe today? How's it going? It's actually good. I'm actually glad that we've uh, gotten past our extreme heat that we've been experiencing that is just outrageous. And uh, I work outside in the sun, so it gets old. And I'm just glad that it's cooling down at least, getting a little bit of rain. And, you know, it's a nice Sunday. Hey, nice. Having a good old Sunday here, Misa. What do you think? Too hot, man. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about this controversial subject a little bit. Um, have you guys heard about what's going on in China with these um, internment camps that they've built? And they have like over, they have a few thousand um, Muslims in these camps, dude. And they're like, uh, supposedly they're comparing them to concentration camps from back in the day. Uh, have you guys heard anything about this? No, that's crazy, dude. Kevin? No, nah, just a uh, little bit of stuff here and there, but nothing with uh, too much about it. Okay, so in, I, I believe it's the northwestern part of China, they're, they have like a, a good amount of uh, Muslims, people who are, identify as Muslims, and they're actually called Uyghurs. It's a type of uh, like a Turkish Chinese um, minority, right? And these guys have been um, being oppressed by Russia or not Russia by China for years, dating back to like the early 1980s. Um, they, they, they had a bunch of riots back in the day there. And so now it seems like the Chinese government is rounding up these people and putting them in these camps and teaching them all about communism, how to speak Mandarin and kind of like brainwashing them and influencing their thoughts. And also they are um, like, what they do with their women is um, they defertilize them by giving them birth control and they like injects and uh, and in- injections. So it's pretty crazy. Um, what are you guys' thoughts on that? That's a, that's crazy, man. That that's actually a big news right now. No, it's not because China likes to regulate that shit. And I feel like I understand where a lot of people are coming from, where they feel like media is biased. So it's like Chris brought up a good point where he's like. What if they saw an area of opportunity where it's like the U.S. is occupied, like this gives us a chance to do some more fucked up shit. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Interference is less because of that, you know, because the less you know about it, then the less you're going to try to intervene and try to save humanity in that aspect. Don't know about it. Well, supposedly this has been going on for like a few years now, but now what's happening are people are escaping these camps and they're going out and they're telling people about what's happening. Mm -hmm. 
So more and people, more and more people are being brought, like people are, are finding out about this. And not only that, like people are starting to take these crazy satellite images of this part of China. And there's these huge detention centers that are being built. And they have over like a hundred of them in this little region that could hold Jeez. thousands of people, dude. It's crazy. So the, their whole plan or goal is to pretty much like brainwash them, like get the Muslim out of them. Is that, is that what it is? Essentially? Yeah. They're trying to, uh, uh, instill like the communist like way of convert life. Them. Yeah. They're trying to convert them and also denounce like their previous religion and their pre previous beliefs. Kevin, what have thoughts on this? Well, I mean, my first thing would be shout out to obviously our country, just because, you know, when you deal with certain things like that, that are catastrophic that, you know, other places that, that can actually happen. You know, I'm, I'm a huge, you know, Humbled. believer in our country. And, you know, obviously we're not perfect. We've got a lot of stuff that we've got to fix, but these are the kind of awful things that go on in other places. You know? And, uh, you know, they, they all have a very different view on how they handle shit. You know, rules and regulations are different. You know, there's a lot of stuff that can get thrown under the rug, even more so than here in the U S right. I mean, in some sense, it's kind of like, a natural rule, you know, you know, that's very inhumane, regardless what country I believe you come from and shit like that, you know. And to say like America, we, we somewhat kind of did that back in World War II with, with the Japanese here after Pearl Harbor. We set up these camps and we got all these Japanese American people and kept them in there throughout the war, you know. So, yeah, we've, we've been through that. It's just uh, it just looks extremely bad that it's happening in 2020 in another country. It's heartbreaking, like you said, dude, that we have to not accept, but that we see that there's other people out there that just treat other people just so right. immoral and just so awful. And it's like, I mean, it does make you feel grateful. Yeah, no, it knowing that, you know, we're in America now. Well, 100%. OK, so this is exactly like a good example of how to show somebody what an oppressive government can do can do. People get all crazy because they're making us wear a mask and they feel like they're being oppressed or because yeah. they put us into a lockdown. Bro, China oppresses their people so much. They'll literally go arrest you from your crib, throw you into these camps with no like you get no attorney, no rights, no nothing. You go straight into these camps. And a lot of people have said that there's like extreme torture, abuse, famine. Uh, they live like in very poor conditions. And a lot of people are getting picked up from their city or their community and they're never coming back dude they're disappearing like it's it's a real fucking deal over there man it's crazy they control everything. it's really crazy it's exactly like you said where they control everything and like you hear some of the responses or or not responses the reasons why these people were picked up and it can be it was one of the things like that they had a picture of a cross on their phone and it's like you know it really does humble us and well, me personally about our freedom of speech, but it also just shows you it, the extreme examples of assimilation. Like there's no celebration of their culture, their ethnic background. Like it's, you're either Chinese, you commit to us or nothing at all. And that's like you said, like what goes on in other countries just makes you really think about us. And just especially in a time right now, you know, when with everything that's going on here in the U S you know, there's, there's so much conflict and, and diversity that's going on, you know, but, the end of the day we need to to realize also what we do have well i mean to think about it it's a perfect year to, if you're a country thinking of doing some shit like that it's a perfect year to do it <laughs> yeah that's exactly what i said i was yeah. like they 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 realize that like there's a lot of shit going on so what they're trying to do is kind of like they're like hey the u.s is worried about this so let's you know let's start you know doing some of the things that we want to do for for china but you know what shout out fucking technology because one of the things that they talked about this was that one like chris said people are escaping so they're bringing awareness to this cause but another big thing is because of technology now like he said people are getting satellite pictures so it's like the more evidence that they put on the government, then China was then forced to say, oh, yeah, we are kind of holding these people. But it's not what you think. Really what it is is that we're just giving them more education and we're just like re-educating them on being a citizen of China. And it's like when you see the blimps of, um, I guess you could say, propaganda that they give their people to like help other people that are like, no, they're just there because like for their own good, pretty much for like their humanity. But it's like it's not humane at all. 
like none of this is humane. Yeah, so I just wanted to fucking talk about that because that was like a really crazy thing that's been going on. So it's pretty shocking, man. And then I, the first time I hear about <laughs> it. Yeah, so go to YouTube, guys. Um, after this, uh, uh, search um, the Chinese um, internment camps, and you'll see a bunch of videos. Go watch like one or two of them, and you'll see like this shit is crazy. But let's uh, switch gears to a lighter note. Um, <laughs> Much lighter. We have, uh, yeah, well, yeah, this one's not much lighter, but Kevin, you had a potential for as an athlete back in the day, and then uh, what happened, bro? You tore your ACL and MCL. How'd that happen? Football in, uh, in high school. Uh, I actually played linebacker uh, for uh, Coronado here at the high school that we live by. Um, so actually, uh, during a game, I had somebody who ended up, uh, or a couple guys that uh, landed on me, and my leg got caught behind me. So I kind of landed on my leg being caught up behind. And, uh, at first I wasn't sure really what happened. You know, I just had felt pain. Like I, I haven't felt before. And I knew that, you know, there was something definitely wrong. And, you know, I was trying to get off the field when I tried to walk, I, you know, was falling down on the ground. I was like, fuck, this, this is definitely not good. Cause you know, if I can't get up and walk off, you know, I was always the one that, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get carted off. I'm not going to get, you know, man, leave that bullshit aside, you know, I'll, I'll get off the field, but I, I, I couldn't even walk to, to get off. So when I was able to walk, you know, halfway through the game after, you know, I'm sitting there just trying to figure out what all has happened. You know, I can feel that my knee is literally like popping in and out of place. Damn. The trainer checks me out. She tells me, you know, look, I think this is what you've got. So obviously we're going to have to get a doctor to analyze, figure out what it is. Uh, you know, so I go in the next day or I wake up actually in the morning after the game, after everything's been situated, I look at my leg and I mean, it was so swollen and purple and blue. I, I could have sworn, you know, I must have broke my leg in half oh, yeah. for how nasty it looked. And this was during the time when we really didn't have, you know, the fancy phones that we have where you would have just taken a picture of it. Because if I had pictures, I would have been like, God almighty. But, yeah, they ended up telling me, that, you know, you tore your, your ACL, your MCL, and your meniscus. Oh, and bas- basically it's a, it's a one-year recovery to uh, – you know, get over all Wait, but it should be easier to get a new foot, a new leg. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it, dude. Can I get one of those metal ones? Hey, <laughs> hey, Just put some WD-40 on it. You'll be all right. Misa, have you ever torn anything like that? Uh, no, man. Luckily, I haven't torn any ligaments. I mean, I've broken a lot of bones, but dude, never that, like that, dude. I can't even imagine, like, because when you see, like, athletes or when they're playing football and, like, they blow their knee out and, like, you see how bad it looks, like, fuck that, dude. That shit is ridiculous. <laughs> Hell no. Oh, fuck. I'm sure that shit. Dude, my knee hurts right now just thinking about it. Like, I'm rubbing it. I'm like, fuck, bro. God bless. So then how long did it take? Like, they say the year was the recovery, but how long did you take? Yeah, I mean, you know, it took, I mean, for six months. You know, well, I mean, for the first three months, I was in crutches and a brace that went from my ankle to my hip. Oh. And then for six months, I still had to wear that brace and do uh, rehab. But I mean, it, it was probably more of like a two year process before I was able to actually, you know, fully run, exercise, do stuff where I could trust my knee and be comfortable with it. How do you feel now? Now it's great. I mean, besides the screw that I can feel in my knee, but <laughs> other than, <laughs> other than that, we're great. So when it rains and shit, you feel it? Yeah. I mean, if it's cold, you know, or if you he feels a rust. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, speaking about getting hurt, uh, remember that one time I fell out of your Jeep at uh, Rosa's Cantina? Uh, I sure do, because it was absolutely fucking hilarious. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. Let's set the scene. Okay, so it was a Saturday night. Um, a few years back, we had gone to tailgate at um, at UTEP with uh, my family, David, Rent- Renteria, my Uncle Mike. Shout out to all those guys. Um, everybody who tails gates with them, we always have a great time. And so I think we went to the game and then after the, like after the game, the tailgate was dispersing and everybody was going to Rosas. Uh, me and Kevin ended up going over there. Kevin used to have a, a Jeep with like the, op- like no doors at the time. And then, um, <laughs> Kevin, go, go ahead and describe what happened after that. <laughs> well, uh, you know. Rosa's Cantina is finally calling it quits at 2 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this Jeep is heavily lifted, tires. It, you know, it's up in the air pretty good. Uh, Chris Chris goes to, uh, you know, grab the, the handlebar that's up by the door to get in. And uh, when, when Chris makes his leap of faith, he doesn't <laughs> the handle. 
and he falls flat on his back out of the gym. Oh, my God. That was a long fall. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I hit the ground, and I didn't even know I was on the ground, and I was just looking up. <laughs> And then, and then Kevin's like, Kevin's like, where are you? Like, what's going on? What the fuck happened? Chris is like, you need to clean your truck, man. He's feeling all that dirt on the floor. The funniest thing about this is that when Chris, when I mean, everyone has it. When you get to a certain point, you're just not very coordinated. Chris is like to even an extreme of that like this guy's falling out of chairs in the room like he just he just completely loses balance like gravity wins. he just throws gravity. himself he forgets to yes. move and then I, I think i even had to ask kevin to like help me up because i was like <laughs> stuck on my back uh, kevin's like facing forward and all you hear is timber <laughs> no, no 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 what about speaking of deeps i cannot forget the time that you were you were throwing up your fucking guts well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was gonna tell that about the the time that I saved Kevin's life this time. Yeah, we this we, was a, we reversed this roles. A, this was a once in a lifetime uh, Friday memory. All right, so it was Kevin's birthday. Kevin, uh, I'll let you start the story uh, for what you remember, and I'll tell you about all the things that you don't remember that night. <laughs> Yay! Well, uh, I was turning twenty five actually, and uh, my birthday was on a weekend, <laughs> which Perfect. makes it that much worse. So uh, we actually started off uh, with uh, our boy, Tony. Shout out, Mr. Tony. Uh, we actually went over to uh, the friendly Ratchet Bar Tortuga. <laughs> and, uh, you know, <laughs> got carried away over there. Drinks, shots, the whole nine yards. Um, then, of course, we decided to go over to uh, one of the country bars here. It's called Little Bit of Texas. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, if, if I recall years. correctly, I believe it, it was on the night where they have quarter beers. Yep. Mm. So, Dangerous. Uh, you can Perfect get a storm. beer. And uh, one of the guys that I worked with was actually the bouncer for that place. And uh, obviously, it's your birthday, so everybody's intent is to buy you every kind of fucking shot they can to make you fucking die. Yes. And uh, pretty much, uh, I drank everything under the moon that night. Um, and then names some. that I can't even remember or tell you, but we're talking 151, Rumps, uh, <laughs> Jack, Tequila. Anything you can think of was uh, was drink. All right, so here's where I come in, right? So <laughs> I I guess I was doing something earlier in the day where I couldn't join these guys till later. So Tony calls me and he's like, "Okay, you need to come to Ice Tunas right now. Uh, you you have to come right now." So we show up at fucking first thing we see, and we pull up right, and I pull up by Tony's Jeep. Uh, this dude is hanging out of the Jeep with his shirt off. And they throw up all over the fucking place. Bro. I have a picture. I have <laughs> and he looks like he's dying. He's hanging yeah. out. He's like, Bow. <laughs> <laughs> I was he's yelling for help dude he was he was trying to yell for help, but he was like gagging on his own fucking vomit. And but, I just remember Jesus. like it's been I've never seen Ke I mean Kevin can drink. Like, he's definitely one of the people that can put it down for a while. And I had never seen him that fucked up. Yeah. So what we did is we ran into the bar like good friends. We left Kevin in the car. We, you know, we left him there for a while to sleep it off. <laughs> Went into the bar, had a few beers with Tony. And then eventually uh, we had to take this guy home. And on the car ride home, you know, Kevin was like passed out. And he's a heavy ass guy. Like, he's oh, he's yeah. tall. He's kind of tall. Like, you know, Kinda he's tall. fucking muscular and fucking Kinda. we had to drag this guy into the crib, which was a fucking mission in itself. And yeah, then the, the, the only part that I can remember is being in the back of your car and I'm so fucked up that I'm like, dude, my legs are like stuck. <laughs> I can't get like and you were just like, well, just pull them out. Like, and I'm like, they were like, they felt like a fucking spaghetti noodle. <laughs> Around the seat. Just pull him out. <laughs> Just lift your legs up. Uh, so we get this guy into the crib, and then he spends the night on his bathroom floor, fucking throwing up vile for like the next eight hours. It was amazing. Him in the toilet would have never been closer. <laughs> and the uh, next day too, when shit, we man. went to check on him, because my Ven my best friend Vanessa was in from out of town, and she was like, "Dude, like I'm kind of worried. Like he's he's a light dude and." He looks still green. Like, we yep. need to check on him. We need to make sure the fluids are good. It was a night to remember. Hey, Misa, have you For ever us. pulled a Kevin in that way? Um, 
Yeah, dude. Uh, a lot of times. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> when you, you said Tortugas. It reminded me of a time where fucking me and my wife were barely dating. I just started dating and. And she's like, let's go to Tortugas. She used to live very close by. So I, I told Blue, I was like, yo, dude, let's go. So me and Blue show up, man. And all we were drinking that night was adios, motherfuckers. Oh, yep. shit. And, then, you know, that name lived up, you know, it lived up to its name. Yeah, you went adios, <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah, I, we both checked out. Oh, you know, shit. I remember, like, <laughs> my wife was going to just drive us to, to Blue's house. I was living with Blue. And we both ended up sitting in the back seat, and my wife's like, "What the fuck? <laughs> Sit up here!" <laughs> and dude, I guess I was just so drunk, I just never did. I just stayed in the back. Just seat. stayed in the back. <laughs> okay, great. That night, that night ended up with a me and Blue like a uh, uh, singing with a Frank Ocean song and shit. <laughs> hey, hell yeah, that's oh what's up, gosh. dude. Okay, so you see, guys, sometimes things get carried away, and we all have a bad night. But you, you just gotta charge it to the game and keep moving. Bad you know? nights are good memories, though. Yep. And look, you can uh, eventually start a podcast and talk about them later on in life. You know, so <laughs> if you think about it, it's worth it. So we're gonna try this again, guys. We tried this last segment, or not last segment, last episode. This was a new segment that I introduced. I have complete faith in you, Kevin. I want to go on the record. Okay. I'm um, hoping, man. I this, listen to a lot of music, but I do struggle with uh, names and lyrics, you know? Okay, so Same. this is the Name That Hit segment. We did this with our boy Rico on our previous episode, and we failed miserably. And um, <laughs> we're going to get You should just cut that shit out, dude. Yeah, I, I, dude, I can't. I can't. I want. I don't want to die on this segment yet, but... There I'm, goes There goes like 100 fans. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I feel like the fans will we like We only this. got like 50. I feel, I feel like the fans will like this because it's music that I feel like people know, but evidently it's not music that you guys know. So we'll, we'll, we're going to try this out, okay? Must be so sucking music. These, <laughs> I bet you know some of these songs. So these are going to be five songs that um, we're going to read you guys the lyrics to, and then Misa and Kevin are going to try to guess who the artist and the song is, okay? Um, me and Lena are going to take turns reading, and I might do some voice inflection on mine to maybe sound oh, like I'm an Englishman or, you know, hey. an older black woman or a, an old white guy. We'll see. So are you guys ready for this? I don't yeah. even know how I channel. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. So here's the first one. And then I want you guys to answer one at a time. Um, so I'll throw it to you. I'll be like, Kevin, give us your answer. Misa, give us your answer. And then I'll let you guys know if you're right or wrong. Okay. And you guys can answer the same thing. It's fine. <laughs> All right, ready? Here we go. <laughs> Honey came in it, and she caught me red handed it, creeping with the girl next door. Oh, Shaggy. Pi <laughs> hey, let me, me finish. Get out of town. <laughs> let me finish. Picture this we were both butt naked, it, banging <laughs> on the bathroom floor. It. How could I forget that I had given her an extra key? It. All this time she was standing there, she never took her eyes off me. It. Kevin, do you know this song? Misa already knows it automatically. It wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Me. <laughs> I told him he needed Dude, heart Dude, this guy's like spreading part. coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look. You see, look. We're already off to a better start this time around. <laughs> right away, like the second line, Misa was like shaggy. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> okay, Lena, she's got the second one. Where are you? Uh, uh. Oh, Lord. I don't even know what voiceover to do. Okay, okay. Where are you? And I'm so sorry. I cannot sleep. I cannot dream tonight. I need somebody, and always. This sick, strange darkness comes creeping on so haunting every time. And as I starred, I counted. Oh. And as I stared, I counted. The webs from all the spiders catching things and eating the, their insides. Okay, so hold on. Don't answer yet, Kevin. Let's see. If, I'm going to throw it to Kevin this time first. Um, well, that one, shit. Hold on. <laughs> I, I know read this it, one. Hold on. Read it again. Different. Read it again, too. Read it in the normal voice. All right, all right. Where are you? And I'm so sorry. Wow, okay. Well, that's Blink-182. <laughs> <laughs> right away. <laughs> it's the voice. 
Me so. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's the voice, huh? The voice makes it harder. Do okay, me so. Okay, do you guys know the song though? Yeah, dude. Which one? Where are you? <laughs> okay. Sound yes. like that. Okay. Good job, guys. Okay, next one. All right, ready? Why I don't cry when my dogs run away. I don't get angry at the bills I have to pay. Ooh. I don't get angry when my mom smokes pot. Smokes pot. Hits the bottle and goes straight to the rock. Fucking, fighting, it's all the same. Living with Louis' dog, the only way to stay sane. Let the loving, let the loving come back to me. Nisa, what song is that? That's Sublime, dude. Okay, but what's the name of the song? Um, Santeria? No, Kevin, what's the name of the song? Sublime and it's fucking, what is it? Fuck it, fight it, it's all the same or what? Uh, You guys are right there. Come on, come on. Fuck it. Because- loving. That's what I got. Hey, there you go. I remember there you go. that. <laughs> there you yep. go. You see, I like, don't cry when my dog runs away. Look, you see, this is I going a lot better than last time. Okay, yeah, Rico, you suck, Rico. Rico was the problem. Dude. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Rico, sorry, bro. That's, hey, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not confirms. trying. To, I'm not trying to be mean, bro. But you were the problem in this segment last time because <laughs> we're three for three right now, and we're probably going to be five for five after this. Okay. Ready? Hey. Okay. <laughs> Son number four. God bless you, Rigo, by the way. Him. Or I just called him Rigo. <gasps> See? God bless you, Rico. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna tell him. Yeah. Okay, go. Okay. Sometimes I feel like I don't have a partner. Sometimes I feel like my only friend. Is the city I live in, the city of angels, lovely as I am, together we cry. I drive on our streets. Cause she's my companion. I walk through her hills cause she knows who I am. She sees my good deeds and she kisses me windy. Well, I never worry. Now that is a lie. All right. Misa looks like he knows this one. So I'm going to ask Kevin first. <laughs> Shit. Can we, can we, can we get it? Can we get a replay? <laughs> Run it back turbo. Run it back. <laughs> <laughs> Only certain people will get that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I don't have a partner. Sometimes I feel like my only friend. Is the city I live in, the city of angels. Lonely as I am, together we cry. I drive on her streets, cause she's my companion. I walk through her hills, cause she knows who I am. She sees my good deeds, and she kisses me windy. Well, I never worry, now that is a lie. This is Googling it, bro. Oh, you bastard. You better not. I didn't even think that people could do that. They can't. All right, we need an answer, Kevin. Like, I think I've said this to you before. This is the band that I... Me, actually, me and... Hey, me hey, 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 hey. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Stop, like, stop. This the lyrics. Like, hey, 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 hey. The lyrics oh, she, she, already, she already blew it then. All right, who is it? Red Hot Chili Peppers. God bless. Yes! You see? Okay, but can you name the song? Um, Misa, well, can shit. you name the song? Uh, oh. Toy for a goddess, something oh, bridge. Yeah. Under the bridge. <laughs> you keep both Under of them. The okay, all right. So I'm gonna not give that one to Kevin. So right now Mies is winning because Lena just ba- bailed him out on that one. Yeah, yeah. Was okay, so mind? last and, and, and Kevin's looking it up too. No, we he's doing something. Look yeah, you he can is, see it, it in his eyes. <laughs> Kevin, we he's can like, see. He's yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, we could see you. Right, did you forget we could see you right now? Of course you can see me. I'm looking at the... I'm trying to hear what the hell she's saying. Okay. All right. Here comes the last one. I'm going to take this one. See if you could do like a southern accent. No, I'm going to go back to my British ways. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Ready? I'm not worried if about the ring you weareth. Because as long as no one oh. knows if, then nobody can careth. If you're feeling guilty if, and I'm well aware if, but you don't look ashamed if, and baby, I'm not scared if. Okay, hold on. Misa, look, Misa's got all these. I'm so surprised yep. right now. What the fuck? Hey, I man, the music's my life, Dougie. No, it's not. Not at all. <laughs> That's There's yeah. a lot you don't know about me, Chris. Oh, my ah, God. Kevin, mystery. Kevin, please help me out on this. I'm fucking stumped. You're stumped? Okay. You look. don't know how you <laughs> met me. You don't know why you can't turn around and say goodbye. Yes. All you know is when I'm with you. Fucking Uncle Cracker. Yeah, Uncle Jesus. Cracker, bro. Kevin through your veins like a fish in the Dude, sea. Dude, Kevin looks like Uncle Cracker. 
<laughs> like, come on, bro. You gotta get this. Follow me. Okay, so Misa, this is a good segment. I'll be the one. I think we need to keep this segment around and we have to see if people can beat you because you were five out of five right there. That's right, dude. Kevin, you were three out of five. You 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 came out the gates firing on all cylinders and you you petered out towards the end. So, uh, you sorry know what? I don't that. even know if we should count those other ones for him, dude. He's been looking at that screen. <laughs> no, no, he was he. We saw him looking at the very end. He was like Rico. He was cheating. <laughs> 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 okay, so guys, we're gonna get ready to uh, wrap up this podcast. We're gonna do our funniest scene from the internet today, and then we'll do some five random questions with Kevin, and then we'll be out of here. So, who wants to go first on the five funniest or on the funniest scene from the internet today? I'll go first. All right, Misa, take it away. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, dude. It's uh, this is a conversation between a, a father and son, and uh, the dad's telling his son, "If you keep masturbating, you'll turn blind." And the son goes, "Dad, I'm over here. <laughs> <laughs> right here." The dad must have been masturbating a lot, huh? <laughs> All right, who's got who's ready for for theirs? I've, I've got a I've got a I think a decent one. Go. Well, everybody's obviously familiar with the uh, whole Will Smith <laughs> song. entanglement. Yes. Yeah, the entanglement that's going on. <laughs> so, so they actually they had a photo of uh, O.J. Simpson, and he was like, "Yeah, my wife got in an entanglement once." <laughs> oh. oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's terrible. Uh, speaking of OJ, have you guys seen the the new Bronco coming out? Um, yeah. I've, I've seen like posts about it, but I would defer to Kevin. I feel like Kevin knows more about cars than I do. Yep. Well, there's this picture of like um, somebody showing off uh, um, a picture of a Bronco, a white one, the new one, and then under it, it's a picture of uh, OJ with a big ass smile. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's yours, Chris? What's yours? Your turn, buddy. Lena's ready. She's going to take this one. <laughs> it's a picture of a, a guy in a bush, random as fuck, and it says, tequila be like, I know a spot, and then take you there. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, that's going to be me and Kevin after a few, a few more shots in a little bit. Okay, so mine is, you guys all know that uh, X-Men meme where Wolverine's just laying in his bed looking at his picture? <laughs> so the picture that he's looking at is his like I guess his old pair of jeans and it says waist size 32 <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago man that was like 10 Are years ago Kevin what's your waist size <laughs> fucking 36 oh there you go okay I think we're all past the, the 32 uh, I'm at 32 actually what no. nice yeah. <laughs> <I'm sorry>. <laughs> the X-Men's got you some pants Hell yeah. yeah. They're pretty tight, though. Maybe I should move up to a 40 or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So last segment of the day is going to be our five random questions that we like to do with um, almost all of our guests here. Bonus. And then there's a bonus question at the end that Miss Milena has. Are you guys ready for this? Misa, are you ready? Yeah. Kevin, are you ready for Misa to be ready? Yeah, we're ready. Okay, you guys are ready. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Question number one, Kevin. If you could only choose to do one of these, would you go shark diving, bungee jumping, or skydiving? I'm not doing any of them, by the way, so don't even ask. But I'll go with you, and I'll like we'll do the whole vacation thing and get drunk. I mean, if you had to choose, let's say you had to be down with the sharks. Oh fuck! You you are straight. I knew. Well, actually, I think that might be the safest way. I'm not down with the bungee. I'm scared of heights. You know what I mean? (laughs) I can swim at least. You know, not very good, but I'd rather sky <laughs> which one would you do, Misa? I, you know what? Like, I'm afraid of heights, but dude, I hate heights. I've always wanted to skydive, dude. Okay. Oh, shit. You'd so probably pass anything, out just, on the way down. Yeah, dude. But uh, hey, at least I could say I did it. Let's okay. do a podcast from the sky. We'll be high. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the worst podcast ever. All you hear is like, a, like bunch a bunch of fucking of wind. Yeah. yeah. Screaming. Okay. Question two. Do you believe in ghosts? Why or why not? I would say uh, no for me, and yeah. I've, I've been around plenty of this stuff to. Bro, have you seen Casper? It's real. 
You mean the friendly ghost? <laughs> no sea mamon! Oh, shit. <laughs> Bro. Look at it! He's back! Dude, he's Damn. been gone for like the last fucking three weeks. What the fuck happened dude, to this guy? Crazy. Yeah, we dude. got a, de- a death certificate with his name on it. No, nope, he's still dude. alive, bro. He's still here. Fucking your uncle's still kicking. And actually, yeah, he switched up his beer. He likes Rolling Rock now. But I was like, ah, oh, whatever. So, good. yeah. That's and he likes uh, he likes to smoke cigarettes. And he likes to have um, ham and cheese sandwiches for dinner every night. So he's doing good, dude. He's progressing. So, wow. okay. Glad. Hey, Misa, do you believe in ghosts? Um, Sometimes. If that makes sense. How does that make sense at all? That makes no sense sometimes. If, okay. It's either yes or no. Like, I'm on Kevin's like, side. No. Like, right now, no. Okay. But, but at four in the morning? Dark at night? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That makes perfect sense. Lena, yes or no on Ghost? Yeah, absolutely. I don't like, there, if there's one thing you got to know, I do not fuck with none of that. I don't fuck with no paranormal. No spirits. Fucking no, Ouija board. No, like I, I don't even, I don't even watch scary movies. Hey I Kevin, I have like a, I have a Ouija board under our bedroom. She does, he, or under our bed. She doesn't even know it. Fuck, yeah. <laughs> All right. Question three. Guys. Ouija board. <laughs> Dude, you know what's so funny? I'd seen like a meme somewhere that said like. It's crazy how you have to be 21 to buy alcohol, but you need to be like eight years old to summon the devil. <laughs> it's a picture of like a Ouija board. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. All right. Question three. Kevin, what is this, the single best piece of advice you've ever received? Shit. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> uh, well, I wish I would have listened to it, <laughs> but uh, I probably would have listened to... Uh, Enjoy being young while you can. Yeah. Hey, well, how old are you? Shit. Up. He's all fuck. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, this guy's like you. He's been living on his own since a young age. Yeah, I feel you, man. My back hurts. <laughs> <laughs> so, what uh, you feel like you missed out on your youth there, Calvo? Uh, I would say just uh, you know, in a hurry to to be older instead of kicking back and enjoying the younger ages, like she said, you know, moving out at an early age, working at an early age, you know. Not 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 your typical, you know, teen year you know, living as a as a an adult more. Hey, I feel you. Hell yeah. yeah. I can I commend you for that, by the way. Do you feel like you've mellowed out since then? Or like maybe have you gotten a little bit more adventurous? Now that you know that you're more secure in like yourself, you know what I mean? Like as an I'd say like I'd say it's like both both. I'd say like it is more like chill but also adventurous. Like I'm like I, I've already learned from the bullshit. I've already kinda learned from do what not you're more mature about shit yeah. you know yeah. yeah all right guys that's why i didn't take a shot right now <laughs> <laughs> you know you're fucking would be down to be drinking with us right now if you could <laughs> yeah all right question four three things that you would take to a deserted island this is perfect for you you're all about survival shit uh i'd like to have some music all right <laughs> i'll give you i'll give you like you can take this one uh, phone that would be connected to the internet and you can play any song at any time but the, but all you can do is listen to music you can't use the internet for any other purpose that's for like sanity right so like, okay so music you'll have any music you want number one so does this have to be like how am i gonna live on this island type no. question or no like, it's kind of like you're gonna live like you're gonna figure that part out like, what yeah. are those extra uh, things that you wish you could have? You know what I mean? Like the luxuries uh, of being on a. That's why. Movie. That's why I laughed that he said music. I was like, bro, how is that gonna keep you alive? <laughs> no, it's like kind of like the thing is like you know you're going to this island and you'll figure it out, but you can only take three things from back home with you. You know. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I would you know either a form of music if if I couldn't you know have music maybe like a guitar or something like that to you know pass time and play and something of that nature um share <laughs> alcohol <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> nice okay so last okay. thing and the last one would shit let's see what else would i bring to an island um i don't know maybe something uh to like draw or like sketch or write you know anything okay. of that nature you know some some pencils and paper a little and, sketch pad yeah something like that okay Misa, what are you taking to an island? Um, I mean, I like that whole idea with the music and alcohol. Uh, <laughs> my third thing would be probably like a, I don't know, like a pet. 
Like a dog? Oh, true. Yeah. So Some someone companion. to chill with? Or, or one of my kids or something. <laughs> well, I think you're, be- you're better off with the dog. Yeah. Or, or until they grow up, because then they could be useful, because then there would be two of you, I yeah. guess. Okay, Lena, what, nah, you, but then, what but you then take- they'd want to drink beer. Yeah, but never mind. I'll t- I'll stick with the dog. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Lena, what are you taking to an island? Uh, I definitely think something to write because I think it's important, especially her homework. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> her book. <laughs> My well depends on if I'm on break or summer. No. Um. Yeah, I guess something to write. I would want something just to be connected to the internet for like leisure type shit, like not just music, but like books and stuff you know so we'll give you an amazon <laughs> kindle fire yeah get her a kindle, <laughs> get her a kindle with 120 gigs no, <laughs> you gotta read the book and delete it and then download <laughs> another one whatever and then alcohol yeah for sure like i'm yeah. not no, no 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 i take it back no i'll take that mary jane okay <laughs> true okay so question number five kevin if you could, and this ties into a little bit about what we just talked about about staying young, but if you could stay one age for the rest of your life, which age would it be? Ooh, that's a good one. It's a good one, right? Because you're like, I could have the luxury of being a kid and not having responsibilities, but then I can't drink, and I can't drive, and I can't go about my life how I want. And like, You'll probably you know be like mean? in a foster home your whole the whole time, dude. Yeah, if you're a kid. So. You know, this is a tough one. Think like you know. I I think yeah, this is man. a good question. A baby. Now nah, you know what? That's like the worst part of you being can alive. Just shit and yeah. Eat all day and yeah. <laughs> you can do that now too. But you 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 don't like create experiences or anything. All right, yeah. Kevin, go ahead. Like Later. I think I'd probably go with somewhere in the middle school age. You know, somewhere in that range. Oh, yeah. Um, because thing, you know, you get to the high school level, there is more responsibility, there is more shit going on. You know, for some people, you know, they are already working, they're already dealing with these kinds of issues. So I felt like middle school was, you know, it was pretty laid back. There was no worries, there was no concerns. It was just kind of like just have fun, you know. Yeah, I hey, definitely agree. I feel you on that, Misa. What age are you staying? Probably this age. <laughs> Which is what twenty nine. Yeah, man. Okay, so Kevin, you're staying like twelve. More in that range, twelve to fourteen. Okay. Yeah. Lena, what age are you staying? I think I'm with Kev. Nah, I'd say no middle school. Okay, I'm going. So uh, the same age. Yeah. yeah. So she's twelve too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bro, I'm going twenty-one for sure, dude. Like because now you're like that's the, like the best you can get because now you can do everything. But you're also kind of capped out in a way. But it's also like you're just gonna have a good ass time all the time. Yeah. So and your and your back doesn't hurt, Misa, and you don't have kids either. So you know what I mean. Your metabolism is so good. Okay, Lena's got the bonus question, and we'll close out the pod for today, guys. One word to describe your life. Please do not use blessed. This was a bonus question that I've already heard before. Fucking answer. Well, then you better got wow. to have a goddamn good answer. Oh, well then. <laughs> God diggity damn. Yeah, well, I'll be goddamned. Some bitch. One yeah, word see, to describe my life. It, it's pretty by hard. Saying blessed. <laughs> Can't be blessed. Uh, one word. About it. Uh, let's go with uh, winner. <laughs> Hey. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Are you fucking serious? Winner? No, yes, winning. Lena, that's what he said. Ay, ay, we, ay. we are winning in life, Lena. Winning. All right, all right. I'm taking note uh, of it. Lisa, write that down. Winning. That's two ends, okay? Winning. <laughs> winning. Hey, Nick, real quick. Did you run track by chance? Can hey. you tell me your times? Hey, his what? name's not Nick. <laughs> Stop. It's Kevin. <laughs> I mean, Kevin. <laughs> Scratch that one off. Yeah. Switch up the names. Uh, uh, yeah. That shit was there, wait, yeah, With a C or a K? Stop. Uh, Kevin with the K. And then there's a, v, there's a V in there. And then it ends with the I and an N. In. Okay. So just make sure you get that right. All right. Yes. My brother's name. So, uh, final thoughts on the podcast today. 
Um, who wants to go first? I think Lennon wants to go first. Lennon, go first. Uh, Kevin, I hate you. No, I'm just kidding. Definitely. The feelings mutual. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for spending your time with us, dude. I know how it is. I know you work hard. I know that, you know, you got a lot going on between work and school and fucking life and living. So thank you for sharing your time and your space with us and a part of your soul. It's always cool when you have friends on and when we share like bonds and friendships and memories and stuff. So shout out. <laughs> Mesa, final thoughts. Yeah. Um, dude, Kevin with a K. Bro, <laughs> nice meeting you, man. Good podcast. Um, one well, good advice. Um, stay away from Chris, man. Yeah, straight up. <laughs> For good real. Touch. But hey, how can you tell that to all my friends? <laughs> dude have you heard the stories that you guys have gone through yeah. bro that's why we yeah. that's why we're still friends because we've been through some fucking shit yeah yeah you gotta, well, hey you gotta go through adversity with your friends bro it, it, it tests the bond you know what i mean i think you mean randomness and craziness no and no no because no. it was all orchestrated that way you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure. i'm gonna fall off the truck tonight guys that's my plan yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for real dude and and look you'll never forget that shit ever dude i i don't care who you are you won't all right kevin final thoughts uh thanks man for having me on here guys it's been a blast uh like i said i think you guys are you know doing something good and obviously you guys enjoy it so shout out to to all of you for having me on here and you know hopefully we can do another one sometime always hey hey, kevin before you go uh i wanted to check in on your hydro flask that you won uh how's that doing uh, it's actually great. I take it to work every single day. Uh, I go through it probably like twice in a day and oh, nice. keep, keeps everything extremely cold. So shout out to uh, Chris as well for providing that to you guys and for you guys uh, giving me a chance to win it. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah shout out Chris Melina for sure. Shout out the governor. Yeah. Uh, shout out the governor. <laughs> but yeah, guys, <laughs> this was episode 37 of Conversing with Chris and Misa, the podcast. My final thoughts, Kevin. Thanks for hopping on here, bro. Shout out. Uh, I'm sorry about your car once again, bro. I mean, I I can't apologize enough for that. I know I fucked up. Um, But yeah, dude, thanks for coming on here, chopping it up with us. I feel like this was a really cool episode. Uh, A lot of good uh, memories that we talked about. Uh, Misa, fix that fucking shit eating grin on your face, please. Chris. (laughs) There you go. Just smile. You do know. Dude, I just you want you to know that smile. I know where you live, right? I know, dude, but I just want to see you smile, dude. I just want to. There you go. Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. No. <laughs> okay, Lena, thank you again, uh, guys. This was, um, like I said, episode thirty-seven, conversing with Chris and Misa, the podcast. Uh, make sure to follow us on Facebook, like us on Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube, and right, like, what? what? Then, did you get Misa's final thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he interrupted me halfway through, but it's cool. <laughs> you see how he is? Me no, you did too, Lena. Okay, Misa, final thoughts. See, I'm yeah, to anyways, um, Kevin, it was a good one. <laughs> Chris, it was a good one. Lena, learn some manners. <laughs> That's it. That's now I'm done. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's try this one more time. All right, guys. That was episode 37, conversing with Chris and Misa, the podcast. Follow us on Facebook. Like us on Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and like, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. And we are out. What is up, everyone? This is our giveaway where we're going to announce who the winner of our giveaway is. <clears throat> we just finished um, putting together episode 37 featuring our boy Kevin Austin. Shout out <coughs> to him. Um, so, yeah, guys, thank you for everybody who participated in this uh, giveaway. What we did is we wrote down your names in, in num- numeric order, and then we're going to um, do a little random randomized number and we'll show it on the screen that way you can see who who won so i got the list right here here's a list okay so number one guys it's number one through 13 so number one is kendall so that means if this randomizer picks your number you win it's as simple as that uh kendall lee's number one number two uh sarah desiree michelle 
Oh, Sarah Denise. Sorry, oh, sorry. I have, yeah, I have terrible handwriting. Uh, number yeah, three, Elijah yeah. Savio. Shout out to you. Number four, uh, Dom- Dominique Untalon. If I mispronounce these guys, somebody correct me, okay? Please. Um, no, number, it's funny. It's funny, dude. Number Just keep f- going. Number five, no, Naomi Priscilla. Jesus, struggled with that one. Uh, number it's six, like- um, Elijah Williams. Uh, number seven, Kimberly Cummings. Number eight, Kevin Galindo. Number nine, our boy Blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What up, Blue, Blue, Blue? Number 10, my boy Isaac Beltran. Number 11, Nicky Nojos. Number 12, Sylvia hey. Ponce. And number 13, Lupita Diaz. So shout out to all you guys for participating, checking out the live stream, sharing. Uh, shout thank out you, to guys. you guys. Thank you, that. thank you, thank you, thank you. So... Without further ado, guys, I'm going to share my screen. Misa, make sure that it's coming through good for me, please. Here comes Damn, my- dude. I look good. Mm. Okay, here's my screen, guys. Hey. Okay. As you can see, I've set numbers 1 right here through 13. Do you see that, Misa? I see it. And once I hit this roll button, this number 9 is going to change. Whoever's number it lands on, you're going to be the, the person who wins the giveaway, okay? <laughs> So, Misa, mm. can I get a drum roll? Can you do that? <laughs> drum roll, please. Okay, so count us down, Misa. Tell me when. Three, two, one, and then I'll do it. Tell me. Three, two, one. Hey! I don't know who's that. Number four. Number four is Dominique. Hey, Dom! Actually, it was her birthday. I don't know if it was yesterday or a couple of days ago. So nice. There you go. Shout okay. out. She'll get a birthday. Well, it's not, I mean, she won it, so it's not really. It's a not really for her card. birthday. <laughs> we can but call it, it could a be birthday so. Gift card, yeah. But anyways, guys. So shout out to Dominique. She's the winner for this giveaway. Um, thank you for supporting the show. Uh, yes, thank you. Me or Misa will get in touch with you, and we'll get you. Um, you know the the gift card that you won. So shout out to you guys. Um, guys, we're we're about to start recording episode number 39 featuring my sister Amanda Marcus, so we're going to get into that. But thank you guys for sharing. I hope you enjoyed Kevin's episode. Misa, you have any final words for the people today? Yeah, it's just a big shout out to everybody. Uh, thanks for the support, guys. Really, really appreciate it. We love you guys. Let's do it. What's next? Who's next, Chris? Who's next? <laughs> next up, we got our boy Matt Rivera. He's episode number 38. Lena, do you have any final yes. words? Um. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I should have been better prepared. Thank you for participating. Thank you for watching. Thank you for giving us your time. Um, just thank you guys for your, you know, your support. It's really been great to have all the feedback and just make connections and network. So thank you for spending your time with us. Shout out Dominique. Can't wait to talk to you. Maybe you're down to get on the pod. Um, and again, if you're down to hit us up, please reach out. Don't be shy. You're already on your phone, so spend this time educating yourself. Donate, and yeah. All right, guys. So we are out for today. And we will catch you on the flip side. We are out. Yeah.